Synthetic man. So when I told you guys I was gonna do this video, unsurprisingly, there were some synthetic man fans in my audience. And to those people, I would like to say, please pay attention to this video. Don't just be like, oh, he's making fun of my favorite YouTuber dislike. No, actually, please watch it, okay? Because I used to be a pretty big fan of the synthetic man as well, okay? I found his channel through his uh, Pokemon is Dead video, which I still believe to be a very good and relevant video. And after that, you know, I subscribed to him, I watched all his videos, every time he uploaded, I was pretty excited. Uh, until I watched his uh, 2021 Game of the Year video, in which I went, oh, oh no. It was pretty bad. Like, I already had some problems with the Synthetic Man's content, like the fact that he can't criticize story for the life of him. Like, he often gets away with it, because he'll criticize uh, a game or a movie with a bad plot. Like, I don't need Synthetic Man to explain to me why the Halo TV show has a bad story. A fucking five-year-old can figure that out. But when he actually tries to criticize a good story, like the Suicide Squad or the new God of War Ragnarok, he completely fails and everybody shits on him. Like, Mahler literally managed to make a four hour long edit of him constantly either being wrong or contradicting himself when talking about the God of War plot. Quick example. Find out that the boar that you kill in the beginning of the first game didn't die and is in fact a random black guy. Then help fix this. Hold here, please. Hold, I said, he's losing blood. The last of his kind in all the realm and you shoot him. You needed food? Target practice. Target practice. I'm, I'm so, so sorry. Keep that pressure on. The blame is mine. I should have kept a closer eye. Will he die? I will not let him. You clearly saved the boar in the first game. Once again, who the hell would remember this and why? It doesn't matter in the least. So here he criticized the game for this character randomly coming back, and then when people point out to him that you saved that character's life in the first game, his argument is, oh, but who would have remembered that? That's stupid. No, mate, just because you're too lazy to pay proper attention to the story doesn't mean it's bad writing. He does go on to say that his actual point was that the character is useless, which, I haven't played the game, but from the clips I've seen, the character does have a minor impact on the story, so he's not useless, but whatever. Anyway, this was just me trying to show you that he does indeed suck at criticizing story. Anyway, his Game of the Year 2021 video, the video that made me realize that this guy might not be that great. So the video starts off like any other Game of the Year critique video, right? But then, he introduces the woke counter. Now, I'm not saying that is a bad thing. There definitely is some woke bullshit going on during these sort of award shows, but the way he classifies something as being woke trash is a bit odd to me. But I'm not going to explain again what force diversity is. I'm just going to put a counter every time a female protagonist shows up and a second counter for every time that diversity, inclusion, accessibility, or the topic of race comes up during the presentation. Yeah guys, force diversity is when woman, like literally every single time there's a woman in a video game, not even a, a protagonist, when there's a woman in a game, and she's not like fucking 50s housewife, it's woke trash according to this guy. Like, he made a review of Modern Warfare 2, and according to him, the game is woke trash because there's two female characters in the game. Also in his God of War review, he calls Freya a uh, Mary Sue and says she's way too powerful. She's a goddess. Bow to your queen! Really? My god, this comes across as some kind of feminist torture fantasy. What the fuck? She's a goddess and queen of Asgard. Like, I don't understand. How is she, how is she a Mary Sue? Like, yeah, she's powerful as fuck. She's, she's a god, what the fuck do you mean? He also has a virtue signaling counter, which yeah, virtue signaling is annoying when I'm trying to do something fun, I don't want to be told about how bad cancer is, I am aware how bad cancer is. But he also counts accessibility as virtue signaling, you know, disabled people being able to play video games. He even says it, there's like an accessibility award at the Game Awards, and he calls it a woke award. And for our next major award, we have the other woke category, Innovations in Accessibility. To be fair, he did say that he likes that games are becoming more accessible to people with handicaps, but it's still weird to say it's woke. Now I'm wondering, like, if the synthetic man goes outside and sees, like, a wheelchair ramp in front of a store, does he just start shaking with anger? You know, seeing as uh, accessibility is woke for some reason? Now, like I said, this video is the one that made me, you know, 
more skeptical of the synthetic man, thinking like if I really even wanted to continue watching his content. But then his next video, his top 10 games of 2021 video, is the one that made me unsubscribe and never look back. Not because I disagreed with his list, but because at the end of the video, he just randomly goes into this rant. Here, watch this shit. And 2021's game of the year is... Raid Shadow Legends is what I'm sure some of you think I actually believe. Honestly, I'm disappointed in a lot of you. Do you really think I believe a single word I said during that ad? And if you do, well, you're just an idiot. I hate to say it. And if you don't, then what's the problem? A lot of you seem to believe that this is going against my principles or that I've deceived you or betrayed your trust in some way. If you actually watch my channel, you know that my position on microtransactions has always been that the idiot consumer is to blame for purchasing them. Okay, so this is how the rant starts off. He made an ad read for, you know, Raid Shadow Legends, and then some of his fans were upset because they thought that he was selling out. I mean, his response to this criticism is literally, it is not my fault for promoting something I don't believe in. It's your fault for buying into it and thinking I was being serious. You can't do that. It's like promoting a scam and then saying, well, it's not my fault for promoting the scam. It's your fault for being too stupid to fall for the scam in the first place. That's not how these things work. And he also says it with like the most smug look on his face. Now, honestly, this isn't that big of a problem. I don't really care if a YouTuber does an ad read or not. I understand they need money to, you know, live and all that. And I can't imagine the outrage over this ad being so massive. He just had to respond. I'm sure if he just let it go, people would have stopped complaining after like a day. But unfortunately, the synthetic man has an ego the size of your mother, okay? Fucking huge. So often when he gets criticized like this, he has to respond for some reason in the worst way possible, making everything worse. In this case, blaming his audience for him selling out, saying like, oh, it's not my fault for selling out, it's your fault for actually thinking that I believe in the product that I am promoting to you like just say I don't like the game but I needed the money that's all you had to say I would not no one would have given a fuck honestly but unfortunately uh, this isn't the end of it because his uh, rant actually gets worse somehow and what you want me to bring that up every goddamn time no it's just preaching to the choir it has never been a focus of my channel. I've probably talked about politics in every other modern gaming review. That is the obvious focus of my channel and the obvious thing I believe is ruining the game industry. Yeah, so this is the synthetic man basically saying that his entire channel is about politics, which isn't a surprise, but it does confirm to me that he probably goes into a lot of games with the idea of I'm gonna hate this and I'm gonna call it woke trash and even if I can't find any woke trash I'll just make some shit up. Oh, here's a woman being stronger than a man and calling herself queen? That's woke trash. Doesn't matter that she's a powerful goddess who is actually a queen. None of that shit matters, okay? Because I'm sure that when the fucking ancient Germanic and Scandinavian tribes started worshipping Freya, they did it because they were thinking about feminism. And this is my main problem with this guy's channel now. I've already mentioned it a little bit earlier, and I'm gonna mention it later in this video as well. But he can't seem to differentiate actual forced politics into a video game, and just a female character, or a gay guy. He doesn't see the difference. It's all the same woke trash to him. Yeah, I obviously don't like microtransactions, but I also don't think it's nearly the most important thing ruining video games today. I can ignore a store page believe it or not, pretty easily. Yeah, that doesn't mean that everybody else also can ignore them, especially when a lot of these marketplaces are specifically designed to get little kids to spend money on them and get them addicted to gambling. What are you gonna do outside of begging daddy government to make it illegal? Bully your normie friends into not buying battle passes or loot boxes or XP boosters? There's literally nothing you can do about it. It's a waste of time to even talk about it at this point. Yeah, guys, it is bad to try and do something about gambling addiction. You should not even try to stop it, especially not with these video games where very often it's kids who are getting addicted to the gambling. That's not a problem at all, okay? Just don't buy them, you fucking idiot. And I don't care. I'm not fucking Jim Sterling. In fact, again, 
These people who are making these comments that I betrayed my principles clearly haven't seen my over an hour long video breaking down my problems with modern Jim Sterling videos. And this is before they transitioned, by the way. So it has nothing to do with that. It is purely the points he made around Cyberpunk. And yeah, it turns out I was wrong about Cyberpunk. It was a massive disappointment. But my main points in that video still stand. He's a communist, and if you are a communist or socialist or whatever LARPing edgy teenage revolutionary, get the fuck off my channel. I would hate you in real life, unironically. Okay, so I don't know who Jim Sterling is, nor am I gonna watch his one hour long Jim Sterling video. But from what I've gathered here, and just tell me if I'm wrong, Jim Sterling talks a lot about microtransactions and how bad they are, and therefore he is a communist. I also think it's hilarious how he says like, oh, if you're a communist or a socialist, I would hate you in real life, unironically. <laughs> Unsubscribe from my channel. It's like, is that, the, is that the only thing you can see? Politics and everything, in video games, even in people? Like, I have many friends that I disagree with politically, but I realize that people aren't just their political opinion, and I can actually like someone despite disagreeing with them on political issues. But I guess the synthetic man can't, guys. To him, people are nothing more than their political opinion. <laughs> and I'm not talking about someone like who constantly forces their politics in your face. Yeah, I get that. That's annoying. I wouldn't want to be friends with someone like that either. But you're telling me that just because someone has a different political opinion from you, you hate them? That's great, man. Definitely. But now let's move on to his newest video at the time of this recording, which is his coverage of the Game of the Year 2022 awards, where we can really see how it, it doesn't matter to him, how he can't differentiate real forced politics from just normal shit. Last year, I'm gonna bring back the woke counter and just straight up combine it with the female protagonist counter. I already know some of you think that there's no problem with having a female protagonist in a game, and on paper, I absolutely agree with you, but I'm sorry, I'm way too black-pilled to think that the vast majority of games developed nowadays that have a female protagonist were made purely out of someone's creative vision and have absolutely nothing to do with politics. So we'll just have one combined woke counter for the whole thing, and I will leave out any female protagonists I feel do not count as woke. Feel free to complain about it, I guess. My guy admitting that he actually doesn't bother to differentiate between a game with a female protagonist and a game that's actually woke trash. But Atomics, didn't he just say he's gonna try to at least differentiate a little bit? Yeah, but it doesn't matter, because just look at this clip. Instead of a completely new IP, and what better one to choose than Hades, which is arguably their best game. It was my 2020 game of the year, so I'm certainly interested in this. Yes, there is a female protagonist now, and yes, they are probably a bit left-leaning, but fuck it, I'll let it slide. They made a quality game, and that is definitely more important than the political leanings of the creators. Yeah, so even though he doesn't put this on a woke counter, he'll still mention that the game has a female protagonist, and that the developers are probably left-leaning, but it doesn't matter this time because he likes the game. So now the reason this isn't put on the woke counter isn't because he genuinely believes it isn't woke, he still goes out of his way to tell you that he thinks it probably is woke, but he likes the game, so he's not gonna put it on the counter. This is also the only time that I can recall in the entire video that he didn't put a game with a female protagonist on the woke counter. We are shown more gameplay footage of Baldur's Gate 3. Now I have to say once again, you can create your own character, and a long time ago when the early access came out, the vast majority of gamers created a generic straight white male, which pissed off Larian Studios. No, that's real, you can look that shit up. And so for this trailer, once again, we have a black female created character. And there's also a lesbian kiss near the end. Now this is actually a good take and a great example of, you know, developers actually forcing their political beliefs onto the player base by in this case getting mad when they don't create diverse enough characters so they put an incredibly diverse character into their trailer. Unfortunately these type of takes by the synthetic man are ruined by the fact that everything else also classifies as woke trash to him. Like let's just look at his reaction to the next trailer. The next major reveal is Ken Levine's next game, the creator of Bioshock, Judas. And once again, we have a female protagonist. I'm not sure if she's a cyborg or an android, so I guess if it's an android, it's technically not a female, but I guess she would probably identify as female. I don't fucking care. 
And already it is somewhat overtly political, which shouldn't come as a surprise to anybody. His games have always been political. What in this trailer suggests that the game is going to be woke? Besides the fact that this guy in the past has made games that, you know, lean left politics wise. And I've played Bioshock 1 and 2, I haven't played Infinite, but I've played Bioshock 1 and 2. But those games, I wouldn't say, have like a woke leftist political agenda. The games are mainly about how capitalism taken to its furthest extent is bad for society. Uh, which I guess you could say is a leftist agenda, but they're not trying to like force it down your throat. Like they would do in a game like Far Cry 6, where every character constantly talks about how racist America is and how capitalism is bad. But yeah, in the trailer itself, I can't seem to find anything that's actually woke, besides the fact that there is a female protagonist and when he did talk about like the game's gonna be woke and he did the woke counter thing the game trailer was showing like this poster of a biracial couple now i'm not sure if he's trying to imply that that is the woke part i don't want to put any words in his mouth because he didn't outright say that that was what he thought was woke but i think i feel like he kind of implied it and i just want to say that earlier in the trailer it looks like there's two white people kissing yeah i know they're made out of white marble but they actually look like white people to me so i don't really see how the biracial couple is a problem but the other one isn't then i feel like i can keep this video going a lot longer like i think there's a lot of shit i could talk about that the synthetic man has said that i disagree with or i think is dumb but i don't want this video to be like half an hour and i've been working on this video for way too long anyway so I will just quickly mention some other things, like how he always, in every single one of his videos, well maybe not in every one, but he very often mentions, like how he doesn't feel like editing his videos a lot, right? Most of his videos are just his gameplay with him talking over it and that's about it, which is fine. And in the past he's also talked about how he feels like YouTube videos don't really have a long-term, like, purpose or whatever, so it's really weird when he criticizes other YouTubers that clearly put more effort into their videos than he does. Like, for example, when he called a British potato not a real content creator, even though he does way more editing in his videos than Synthetic Man does. I just think when it's like a tiny YouTuber who has no identity, it's a little different, you know? Like, if I made... Like this, uh, what was he called? Some bread or something. You guys said his name earlier. Or potato, that's what it was. The potato guy. I don't think he is really a content creator, you know what I mean? I mean, maybe he is. It doesn't seem like it. But, I don't know. I don't know, whatever. I can just be a hypocrite, I guess. Then there's also the whole Zero Needs Coffee thing, which is I think is the most recent, I guess, controversy around the synthetic man. Where he responded to Zero Need Coffee and said some really dumb things. Well, you guys do your job. Dislike bomb the video. I don't give a shit. I don't care if I get in trouble from YouTube. Every one of you come here, dislike this video. I don't think I have to tell you guys that getting your audience to dislike bomb and harass another creator because he had a critique of you that you didn't like is not a good thing to do. Yes, Synthetic Man later on in a different video did say that you shouldn't actually go to this guy's channel and harass him, but he didn't say it because it's the morally right thing to do, you know, not harass other people. He said it because he didn't want to get into trouble with YouTube. And maybe be a little bit more charitable, a little bit less hostile and insulting, which is not exactly my forte, but this is a smaller YouTuber, and to be frank with you, I'm not even sure I'm talking to an adult here. So I'm going to dial back my responses accordingly. And this kind of goes without saying, but please do not go to this video and harass this person. The last thing I need is another reason for YouTube to shut my ass down. So if you guys could just control yourselves, I'd appreciate it. Also, I don't know how much time there was in between the video where he told people to not harass him and the live stream where he told people to go dislike his video. But I can't imagine that it was a very short amount of time. Anyway, uh... Yeah, I don't fucking know. There's also, like, the time where he said that the Zero Needs Coffee, like, points were somewhat invalid because he uses a profile picture of an Adventure Time character. Oh, wait, isn't that, like, the... the... I'm, I'm trying not to say tranny version, but the alternate universe version of, of Marceline that's, like, a boy or something. So already we have, like, an effeminate male character that you're using for your avatar. Really not helping! Really not helping! This is... this is... let me just... just blub up. A little bit just flex uh, show off my my raw masculinity versus this effeminate twink okay first of all it's not an effeminate male character it's just a male character and second of all him fucking flexing is so cringe i'm not 
I'm not one for making fun of people's bodies, but you know, he kind of brought it on himself. You don't lift, dude. You talk a lot about in the videos that you make, or at least in the God of War review, you, you also talk about like lifting and how you lift. You don't lift. Like, yeah, you have big arms, but that ain't muscle, okay? I can tell it's not muscle. I'm sorry. I don't want to make fun of you, but you brought it on yourself. Y you're not fit, okay? With your fucking raw mask. So get the fuck out of here, dude. Anyway, I, I think I'm gonna end this here. If I wanted to t I could talk about so much more, like, random weird shit he says. I could probably feel like a... Th 8 hour long video with just a compilation of dumb quotes from the synthetic man that make no sense or just sound very odd. <laughs> I don't know, I'm fucking tired of shit, I wanna go to bed. This is the end of the video, if you like this video please like and subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you all next time. Goodbye. All in insulting, which is not exactly my forte, but this is a smaller YouTuber. This is a smaller YouTuber.